Hey everybody, welcome to the little piece on perpendicular lines now. Now this isn't going to be comprehensive. Like I said, we're going to use this stuff a lot more later. Um, but for now, we're really talking about writing equations of these lines and taking a look at their slopes. Now, when someone says a, the, the slopes of perpendicular lines are negative reciprocals of each other, that sounds awfully complicated. Um, but let's just talk for a second about um, what it means to be perpendicular. All right, so if someone says perpendicular, they're saying these lines intersect at right angles or a right angle right here, okay? In fact, the x and y axis are perpendicular to each other, they intersect at a right angle. All right, so that's what we mean by perpendicular. Not that they intersect, that's not enough, right? They have to be intersecting at exactly a 90 degree angle, okay? All right, so when you take a look at that, what makes this happen? If you take this look at this line, here's a slope of 2 over 1 up 2, and this one has a slope of down 1 over 2, which is a negative 1 half, right? So negative 1 half and 2 are slopes that would be perpendicular to each other, all right? All right, so that's what this right here means. The, when they say negative reciprocal, they mean you just take this number. Let me zoom in a little bit if I can. Yeah, so you just take the number you're looking at here, like this one, if it's 2, a negative reciprocal of 2 is 2 over 1, flip it, change the sign. Alright, so if someone gave you a slope of negative 1 half and said, um, what would be the slope of a line perpendicular to um, a, an equation like negative 1 half x plus 3, say? You flip it, that's that's negative, that one half becomes two over one and change the sign. Another way to say this is the product has to be negative one. So that's, that's the way they write this in these formal sort of um, definitions. M1 times M2 has to be negative one. Well, that's true. Two times negative one half is negative one. So that's another way of saying the reciprocals of each other. Okay. So let's do a quick example here. Let me zoom out. That's going to be hard to work with. Okay, one more time. Okay, back to regular size here. All right, so we're going to do a problem right here. And um, it says, are the lines defined by the equations? And they give me y equals negative x minus 6 and y equals negative x minus 4 parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Now, they could be neither, right? If they're just different slopes, they intersect, but they're not parallel. Because remember, they have to be the same if they're parallel, and they have to be negative reciprocals of each other specifically to be perpendicular. So, well, this guy, we know his slope's negative 1. We don't have a lot of work to do there, right? And the question is, what's the slope of this line? And we'll go real quick and just work on it for a second. Um, it's, I think it's in standard form again. It seems to be the game they like to play a lot. Don't... And um, what do we have? Oh, wrong pen. <laughs> Let's see. We have... Um, y minus x is negative 6. So we need to um, put this in mx plus b form, right? Well, that's pretty easy. There's just one move to make. So you're going to add x to the other side, and you get this. So his slope is actually 1. Now, the other equation that we're looking at had a, um, was y equals, we said, negative x minus 4 m2 is negative 1. And, and maybe not the best example, actually, because one's sort of an oddball here, right? He is, his, he is his own reciprocal, right? But he's negative, so this is a negative reciprocal. And, in fact, m1 times m2 is 1, or negative 1, or 1 times negative 1. Well, I did, I did them backwards there, but it won't matter. Um, so that's true, okay? And there's a couple questions like that you'll run into, so um, maybe that'll help you. Okay, so let's take a look at another question that comes along, and it's a lot like the parallel line question or problem. What's an what is an equation of a line that passes through the point 4, negative 3? And this time they specify that it has to be perpendicular to this line right here. And the only problem we have with this is we don't know the slope of this line. So we're going to have to go to work on this thing. And 
do a little bit of scratch work to find the slope. Okay, so we've got, um, ah, got the bomb right there. I need to put it back in pin mode. All right, so our equation that we're trying to search for a slope is 4x and plus y. And that's equal to 3. All right, so we're going to subtract this 4x to the other side. So we're going to have y equals negative 4x plus 3. All right, so the slope of this line is negative 4. That means the slope I need to use now they said perpendicular, I need to flip this and change the sign. Well, flipping it means it's one-fourth. I'm going to leave it positive because I have to change the sign from negative to positive. All right, so now we're ready to go to work. And we're told to use the point for negative 3. So I've got to go through that point. And again, we're just going to substitute y equals mx plus b, what well, we don't know, right? And we get negative 3. One four times 4 is 1. That worked out nice. And we subtract this guy over. I guess we get negative 4. And now we can write our equation. So we have y equals 1 fourth x minus 4. And that is the answer. And make sure it does what it's supposed to do. We have a slope of one-fourth, y-intercept of negative four. Well, it goes through that point we made it, and um, that's what they wanted. Now, this will be enough to get you through the Delta Math assignments this week, hopefully. If you have um, problems with these, let me know in the Zoom chat, and um, I'll be happy to work one out with you. Give me something to do, and um, look forward to seeing you guys in Zoom.